Hi everyone, welcome back to Tech Booth. Today we're looking at a very basic portrait photography setup and we're going to be specifically looking at doing some headshots. And this is what you're going to need. Your camera, of course. And then we have a couple of lights here that we're going to be using to demonstrate. Because we're going to be setting up our flashes off camera, we're not going to have them on the camera. You're going to need either a trigger like this to control your units and to trigger them or these simple transceivers that you can attach to the top of your camera and the bottom of your speed light so that they can trigger your lights off camera. You're also going to need some kind of modifier like this umbrella or this soft box so that you have nice soft light on your subject. The other thing you're going to need is a background. You can shoot against a nice clean wall or you can have backgrounds like these ones I have at the back. These are PVC backgrounds. You're also going to need a couple of light stands so that you can mount your speed lights or your pocket flash on. With your speed lights, you're going to need a way to mount them onto the light stand. You can use these simple ones that take an umbrella or you can use these ones that take umbrellas and also other heavier modifiers. The other thing you might need is a reflector to bounce light to fill up some shadows on your image. Next, we want to set up the camera itself and there are three settings that you have to take care of on your camera. Your ISO, your shutter speed and your aperture. You want to make sure that your camera is in full manual mode. You want to be able to control all three of those settings, your ISO, your shutter speed and your aperture yourself and keep those set while you're shooting. So we'll start off with the ISO because it's the simplest. ISO basically is the sensitivity of your sensor to light. As a rule of thumb, the lowest ISO you can get is the one that will give you the cleanest image. So you want to set it as low as possible. So I'm going to set this one to 100. The second setting we want to deal with is your shutter speed. Shutter speed refers to how quickly your shutter opens and closes on your camera to let light in to hit the sensor. Your shutter speed is going to affect two things. One is your exposure and the other one is what is called motion blur. To get ourselves somewhere to begin with with the shutter speed, we use the rule that says your shutter speed must be one over your focal length or the focal length of your lens for you to get a nice clean image without any blur. And so for this example, I have a 50 millimeter lens on my camera. And so my shutter speed has to be at least one over 50 or above. Generally, the lower the shutter speed, the more motion blur you get. And the higher the shutter speed, the more you freeze fast moving action. Now in portrait photography, we are not going to get a lot of motion, especially what we are doing today, which are headshots. So even though we can observe that shutter speed rule, it's not as crucial as if we were shooting something that is moving. So just to make sure, instead of putting it at one over 50th of a second for my 50 millimeter lens, I'm going to set my shutter speed to about one over, let's say 125. The thing with shutter speed is that when you are using a speed light or a flash, there is something that is called flash sync. Your camera has a maximum shutter speed where your flash starts to go out of sync with your shutter. So when you exceed that maximum shutter speed and you take a photo using a flash, you start getting to problems where you get this black bending on your image. There's a way of getting around that called high speed sync. For this episode, we're not going to go into high speed sync. So we're just going to make sure that we observe the one over the focal length rule, so one over 50, and stay within the maximum flash sync speed of this camera, which is actually one over 200. So I'm going to go in between there and use one over 125 as my shutter speed. The next thing we want to set is now our aperture. Your aperture is the opening of the iris in your lens. So if you have a wider opening, you let in more light more light means a higher exposure and a brighter image. And if it's smaller, conversely, you get a darker image. But in this instance, we are interested in our aperture for another reason, because it affects what is called your depth of field. 
When you focus on an image, there's a place where you get your sharpest focus. And for portrait photography, you definitely want your eyes to be the sharpest in focus. Now your depth of field refers to how much is in focus when you are going back into the background. A shallow depth of field will have your eyes well focused, but as soon as you get past going backwards, you start getting your image going out of focus. Now that can be a good look if that's what you're going for. For us to make sure that we have a good depth of field that has your nose and your eyes up to your ears in focus, we are looking at apertures from around 4, 5.6 thereabouts. We don't want to go too far up because we also want our background to be nice and smooth. So we want our background to be blurry, especially if it's a textured background or it has some design. You don't want that background to distract from your photo, so you want it out of focus. So those are the three things that you're going to be setting. For now, we've set our ISO at 100, we've set our aperture at 5.6, and we've set our shutter speed at 1 over 125. Now it's time to do a test shot without any lights. We want to do a test shot without any light because we don't want any of the ambient light to affect our photography. The only thing that's going to affect our exposure are the speed lights that we're going to be using in this session. And so if we've set our things correctly, when we take a photo, it should be completely black even though these lights are on. So I've just, I've just taken a photo and it's completely black. That means I am good. Now with our camera set to exclude all ambient light, the only thing that's going to affect our exposure is our lighting.